little catfish pond out one of our backfields has been let go for years. Damn near dried up. And anyway, we're pumping water out of that into this bucket so we can prime our well and get the old pump started going again. And if there's fish in it, we're gonna go ahead and lime it, put a salt block in it, pump fresh well water in it every day. We'll get some nice catfish out of this little pond just as high as you should get nice catfish out of it. Yeah, it's pumping good. Might need to hold, hold this hose. Oh, I got it cramped on there. Never mind. Kept wanting to jump out. I want to brought a catfish food to see if there's anything in here. Nice little spider on there. From not being up here for a while. The brown recluse. This thing's been neglected for years. We're gonna need to set fire to that pier and just let it burn on down. Death trap. As you can see, this pier is about to fall down. Almost lost my knife. So over the years, since this pond's been put in so many years ago, it's settlement and stuff's filling it in. I wouldn't be surprised if it ain't two feet deep is all it is right now. But it's, you know, it's also been a drought with no well help, so it's two feet down too right now. Well, we're gonna chum it and see if there's anything left in it. I doubt it. It's a mud puddle. The old catfish pond. I didn't think it had anything in it. Fixed the well, filled it back up, and I'm on the way to the fish hatchery anyway this morning to buy some grass carp for a pond I'm getting ready to stock. So I just threw some food in, and they're chopping it up out there. Some good one pounders out there and some fingerlings even. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's still a big one in there. All these years they've remained catfish in this pond. So they're reproducing. Inside the fish hatchery. Every now and then you'll see a white catfish. There's about 3,000 catfish in this one tub. You see just a few white ones. They just sang these out not long ago. These big koi. <clears throat> and they had a skin blight. The pH being bad in the water. So they got them in a saline solution right now. And it puts them in shock but they're already starting to come back. When I first got here, they were all floating like that. Now they're, they're down on the bottom again, doing good. They're all gonna make it. See, these gills are still going. A little bit of salt won't hurt a fish, it helps them. But this is how it's done. what I got a bunch of minnows this time, bullheads. Give those blue gilly catfish something to eat. Well I'll see y'all later, I'm out. Black bass, copper nose brim, catfish. This is the minnow pond. And this is the third pool and they're still getting them. I heard when they get about three foot long, the grass carp, they stop eat, feeding on vegetation. Uh, they do when they're about 18 years old. They slow down. What do they, what do they eat then? Just more like a... Uh, just, yeah. So you want to... You they want still one, eat vegetation, they just don't do like they're supposed to. Right. You, you want a small one that's ready to grow. Yep. Oh, look, look, at that, look, look at that. Look at that copper nose. See, and that's what we put in our pond. He made it. Yep. On to his new home. What about that big one? That's, he's going back in there. That's a grass yeah, carp. He I keeps catch him and throw him back in there as soon as I get him. He hot it up where he can't get away because he's fast and love to fight. That's some fine. Good yeah, that's a good minute to start a bass pond off. Get those in there for a couple, six, seven months, get them reproducing, and then throw you a couple Florida strand bass.
flathead minnows to reproduce where the water is just above 40 degrees. So they're about ready to start now. As soon as that water starts warming mm -hmm. back up, they're going to be ready. I'm pumping fresh well water in mine, so it's about 60 where it comes out of the head. Well, they will probably Stay, right there close standing to right to it. And, yep. yep. Beautiful land. Oh yeah. Well, that was cool, man. Appreciate it. We fish to go put those fish in the pond. All right, man. I'll catch up with you next time I'm up, man. Pull you right, man. Got a hundred copper nose brim and a hundred catfish, and then there's there's a couple albinos in each bag. We're just gonna add to this pond. It's got a little duck pollen on top right now. From when we fertilized the food plots, all the nitrogen went in the water and did a toxic shock and killed all the fish, so we're having to restock it. These little, hey, these little guys like this one that hurts you. Look at that little albino one. There he is. Grab it right. There you go. There he is. A little albino catfish. Yeah. Go on in there, buddy. These are channel cats. These are little channel cats. We're going to feed them every day. But while I was gone, Howard, he fertilized so much and all that rain we've had. Killed all the fish. Yeah, I think it's time to go and let the motherfuckers spawn out there. I like those albinos, those are cool. Yeah, yeah. I heard that stuff don't kill them this time. That would have been a waste of $100. I got the water on it right now. The well water. So that's going to help. I always catch them out here in the cast net. Sure. On the rod and reel. Look at all this fish. Get big. Get big, guys. We've been fishing for a month to try to catch this many fish to stock this again. Look at all this brim. Brim. Copper nose. They spawn three times a year. Making the old catfish pond bigger. I'm scraping all the topsoil off the top to get down to the clay pan. And then I'm piling on the topsoil right there. It doesn't hold water very well. And then along this right here, I'm gonna make the dam out of clay once I get down deeper. But I was driving around there and it's so wet, it just slid right in. Almost flipped over. If that hit the back of that tree, this thing probably would have been all the way upside down in the pond. I gotta go tie it to the truck now and hopefully I can pull it out. Stuck once again, trying to connect the two ponds. So I'm gonna end up having to do it later with a shovel, I guess. There's not gonna be a way to get a track go to it after this point. But the way I got the dam so high, I believe all that's gonna go underwater anyway. Let's see if I can get this thing out of here. <laughs> God, the one thing is another here. See if I can get it on. It's important. Right, all I gotta do is just hold it on. Yeah.
So you're just going to leave the water pump running, fill it up? Yeah, hopefully. It's supposed to rain later this week, too. Yeah, it's going to rain. Uh, get a good rain here Saturday. This should be about 8 foot, 10 foot deep on that side, I imagine. Grape this all the way around. I'm going to leave that in the center like a little circle. Yeah, I'm going to leave the weeping willow, cypress, two cypress, and I got... I'm gonna cut a couple more cypress, put a couple more cypresses on that side. And then just put some artificial structure, some trees in the bottom of it. And then go get a it's too wet to get the tractor in here right now with the with tiller. I'm gonna have to let it dry out a few days. And then I'm gonna top dress that dam with a tiller and then ryegrass this whole thing. But you're gonna go ahead and leave it and run, let her fill on up. Yeah. Bobcat's running fine today, thank God. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, I'm down in the clay table now, and it has a good one. Anytime you're that close to a water source, and it doesn't break through, and you only have two foot of dirt in between it, you got some pretty resilient clay. So what, I have no doubt in my mind this is gonna hold water with ease but I'm gonna have to put a spillway on because on the other side of my dam is Howard's road to his camp and it's gonna flood the flood his road out when this thing fills up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a four inch drain pipe, trench it under the road right there down into that creek. Anytime you're, you're doing any kind of fertilization around water, uh, some, fertilizer, some fertilizers are good for ponds, lime, salt, you know, a little triple 13 won't hurt it, but when when he put his guard in, he, he went a little bit heavy, but I've got it restocked, and then I got the idea to make it bigger, and I guess it's about eight feet in water depth when it fills up right there. The last thing I do is going to connect the two ponds together. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm fixing to get back on the Bobcat and shoot another video in the morning. You're doing a good job, Shelby. It's starting to fill up real nice. Another day, that should all be covered underwater. That's how you do it right there. One cast. Put a little dog food in the water. Look at that bluegill. That's the perfect bass bait right there. Might be called cheating in some people's book, but I don't care. Get double digit bass off of them. I want the biggest ones. Good hand size ones like that. Ten of them. Cheat those dog food in the pond and get them all up there hitting it. Sling your net in. Going to a private bass lake this evening. It's a good live brim. At the fish hatchery, getting some Japanese koi. Just like grass carp, we're gonna put them in a pond to keep the vegetation down. That lake down there has got some monster bass in it. That little pond right there is full of catfish. I'll try to let him let me go fish in that pond. Get some big bass. Said he's got some over 10 pounds in it right now. We got three bags of koi. These get three feet a piece. When a grass carp gets three foot, they don't eat vegetation anymore. So get rid of those. And a koi will be three foot and they'll continue to always eat vegetation and keep the pond from taking over with grass. I got seven. Perfect number.
them off, buddy. Three bags empty. All right, these are Florida A1 bass. And this is going to be the best bass lake, best bass pond, excuse me, in the south. Last year I dug it. This pond's been here for 15 years. And I dug the other side on, left plenty of shade, put 2,000 bull minnows in it last year. 400 copper nose brim. They breed four times a year. Get a head start on putting my bass in. Anyway, I'm putting 100. Florida A1 strand black bass. And these things, in three years, I'll have an eight pound bass in here. So we're fixing, what we're doing right now is acclimating them to the, the new water conditions. And it don't take more than five minutes to do it right. If you put them all in at once, they get culture shock. These Florida strand bass are $2 a piece, so you want to just acclimate them right, get the right pH. Let about a handful of them go. Watch them swim off, they swim off fine, then you let the whole bit of them go. And then deer season's over this year, this, this weekend, so we're gonna take our feeders and put out here on that island and feed the brim and the bull minnows so the bass have plenty of things to eat. So we do something good right, always remember that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap a couple. Come over here, the See the swimming on? It did just fine. They're heavy. The back's heavy. We're going to put it down the water. <laughs> This isn't a new pond on this side, so all this vegetation is still really good. They will eat everything in your pond, and you, if you want to grow a good bass lake, you need to fertilize. And you want to restock it several times a year with bluegill and bull minnows to grow some trophy bass. Southern powered out.